Good morning, all. I'm Pastor Tim Marvel from the Allen Park Presbyterian Church, and it's an honor to be here with you this morning as we worship God. It is uh, Sunday, August 23rd, and it is the 21st time, it's 21st Sunday in ordinary time as we follow the lectionary. There's a, a number of people who have, uh, in this time of pandemic, and the inability of us to meet together as a church that have come together and put technology and music and singing. And we are so happy that we're able to use that technology and to come to you out over Facebook Live and then later on to have this, uh, this recording available for people to watch at any time. Before we begin, I just wanted to talk about that technology a little bit. And what we're finding out is that at the Allen Park Presbyterian Church, that what we've witnessed and what we see is very similar to what many, many other churches are seeing. And that is um, the number of uh, unique views that people are getting, especially after, when they um, keep that recording and let people see it afterwards, is really four times the number of what people that we would normally get into worship. And we also know that that number is probably low because a number of those views are probably families that are watching together. So although the pandemic is this terrible thing and we pray that it will come to an end soon and those who are affected by it will be returned to full health and those who have passed we know are with the Lord, but uh, it has shown us that God's word can be delivered in all circumstances. And we're so... Um, we're so pleased that we have, God's put, it, put some very talented people here to allow us to respond in a quick manner and do this. And relating to that uh, is we are in the midst of a technology upgrade that will even further improve this experience. And uh, you'll see that there's an opportunity that if you are a member uh, or affiliated with the Allen Park Presbyterian Church, or maybe you have been and you live afar and you're able to reconnect with us through our online presence, or perhaps your church isn't meeting at this time and they don't have that technology and you've joined us. We have put forward over $40,000 so that we might upgrade our system and be able to do this. And in the coming weeks, you'll see that the video portion of that is going to be coming online. And then with that, our ability to go not only to Facebook Live, but to YouTube Live and other social media platforms. It's very valuable and it's very comforting to people. And, and we're, as I said, we are so pleased to be able to honor God by doing this. And if you would like to participate in that, there's, you'll see uh, during the course of the service that there'll be a way that you can uh, provide some, some financial help if you would like to do so. So many people already have. We're already halfway to that goal without having an official campaign underway yet. So we're very, um, we're very sure that uh, people will do, the, will do that. And when the time comes that we can be back together, the audio quality of the, um, of, that we in our sanctuary has been upgraded um, incredibly. And in fact, we'd like to even in the midst of the pandemic, uh, we'd like you to be able to witness that. So we will be talking about a way that perhaps we can get people to sign up and bring small groups in so that they can hear that, you can see. And I know that people have been away from the sanctuary for a long time and it can be a comforting place. So um, we're looking at a way to do that. So perhaps you can come in in very small groups and keep socially distanced and you can hear some music and perhaps just sit and, uh, and pray and contemplate. So, it is the Lord's day and we're told to rejoice and to be glad in it. And um, so, we also have a couple announcements and um, it is with faith in the re resurrection but great sadness that we have to share the news of the death of Dolores Jones. Dolores is the mother of Tammy uh, and she passed away on August 14th. Dolores was a longtime resident here in Allen Park before she moved to Florida and then later on to Tennessee she is survived by three children, four grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. So our prayers of strength and comfort go out to her family. And also because of the COVID situation and the restrictions um, and the need to have restrictions on the number of people, it's unfortunate, but we have to say that our annual Presbyterian Woman Craft Fair that we have every November 
uh, we've decided that we have to cancel that for this year. However, we are working on possible uh, having a spring craft fair, uh, if the way be clear with that. And uh, so those are the announcements for the day. And as we prepare to worship God in all of his glory, would you please pray with me? Ever-present God, who was at the side of every creature in creation, be with us now and renew our lives so that we may discern and do your will, doing what is good and acceptable and perfect in your, in your name. And we pray all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, I encourage you to sit back, clear your minds, and listen to our prelude. Amen. So beautifully played by Christine El Hajj. Christine, thank you so much. She is doing all of our accompanying that you'll hear today. Uh, we also have some very, very special music. Our special music that you'll hear between our two scripture readings uh, is an arrangement of the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, uh, his peace prayer. And uh, that was done by our own Margot Davis. And uh, it's sung by six wonderful singers. and. Uh, we, uh, we look forward to sharing that with you. Friends, as we prepare to worship God, would you join me in our call to worship? As one body, we have many members, each uniquely gifted for a particular purpose. We, who are many, are one body in Christ, prophets and poets, thinkers and teachers, artists and advocates, counselors and caregivers. We, who are many, our one body in Christ. With thanksgiving, we offer our very gifts. In service to Christ who makes us one, let us glorify God. Our first hymn will be, When God Delivered Israel.
Amen. Friends, knowing that all of us are human, and that means that we're also fallible, it means that sometimes our decisions and our actions are pushed and shadowed um, by things that aren't of God, but things that we do because we think that it might curry favor with somebody, we might be seen in a more positive light by others, and yet after we do them, we know that it was not the right thing to do. So it is after that reflection that we have an opportunity to repent, to ask for forgiveness from those things which actually separate us from God. And in that repentance, God gives us forgiveness. And in that forgiveness, we have union. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made the heaven and earth. And we need to be confident in this ever gracious, never failing help. And so we come before the Lord and we confess our separation our trespasses, our sins, and we seek forgiveness. Friends, would you join me in our prayer of confession? Forgiving God, we confess that we are conformed to this world. We conform to this world's frantic pace, too hectic to put out all the blessings you provide. We conform to this world's reckless waste, exploiting what you entrust to our care. We conform to this world's shallow values, oblivious to the giftedness of people different from us. We conform to this world's impatient attitudes, preferring the latest instead of the lasting. Forgive our conformity and transform us, O oh God. We pray in Jesus' name. And now, friends, in the silence of our own hearts, let us confess our own sins and trespasses. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we would now be lost in sin. But it is the Lord that is on our side, and so we are forgiven. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. And now, as, as our tradition, we always turn to each other. If we not can't do it physically, we do it virtually and say, may the peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. Peace of Christ. Yeah. So this is also the time now that we have our children's time. And we're going to use a little bit of technology. Um, on this, so just to demonstrate that it's more than just about being able to send pictures and, and, uh, and uh, voice out. Um, what this is, is your, it's a small video that was done by a church uh, in Texas. And the name of that church is the Branch Church. Now, it has to do with the story in the Bible that we're going to hear about uh, what's one of our readings. And it's out of the book of Exodus and it takes place very early in the book of Exodus. Last week, we talked about Joseph and how Joseph's uh, brothers were really very jealous of him and they sold him into slavery. And Joseph was sent to Egypt where he became very powerful because he was very gifted uh, with being able to see what the future was gonna be. And he had great leadership qualities. And then when a famine hit, Egypt had prepared for it because of Joseph. And then uh, Joseph's brothers came down from Israel because they heard that there was a lot of food in Egypt and then they met Joseph and they were embarrassed and they couldn't imagine. They thought they might be killed. But Joseph, in this tremendous act of grace and mercy, uh, it just weeps in gladness that he's found his family again and forgives them. Well. The people of Israel, the Hebrews, as they said, continued to live in Egypt, and they multiplied uh, greatly. And so the story that we're going to hear is about Moses, the baby Moses being born, and also a Pharaoh who isn't really very happy with the number of Hebrew people that are in Egypt. In fact, he's scared of them. 
So he tries to prevent the Hebrew women from having children. And we'll hear about that. But so what happens is Moses is born. And because the mother loved Moses so much and she didn't want to have him killed, she actually put him in a basket in the river. That's the story. We've all heard that story. And because of the Branch Church, we have a very uh, unique video that uh, tells the story in more common day terms. So could we run that, please? Moses, baby Moses, as you can see, I'm just a little helpless baby floating down a river. I, is anyone else concerned about this? Little baby floating down a river, hello? I, are we okay with what's going down, really? All right, so here's what's up. I'm a Hebrew, and we Hebrews live in Egypt, which is a nasty place with lots of sand and stuff. And the Egyptians, they, they don't like us Hebrews. And they're real mean to us and make us work hard building monuments and buildings. I mean, it's a total drag. Like my dad, I mean, he works all the time. Uh, he's never around. Uh, and it's because of this guy, Pharaoh. I mean, what a piece of work this guy is. He's like the king, um, but he's still all scared of us Hebrews. Thinks we're getting too big and that all the Hebrew babies are going to grow up and overthrow him or something. I mean, seriously, look at me. I'm just a little baby for crying out loud. I mean, tell me, who's afraid of this face, huh? I, I'm, I'm too cute. And you know it. You're looking at me going, aw, what a cute little baby. I, I get that all the time. I, anyway, so this Pharaoh dude decides that all the Hebrew babies have to be killed because he's afraid of Hebrew babies. I mean, it's crazy, right? I, am I wrong? I mean, seriously, this guy is off his rocker nuts. And my mom, Jochebed, like, she doesn't want me to be killed, of course. So she hides me in the house, you know, so the mean Egyptians who work for the insane Pharaoh can't find me and kill me. Uh, but she can't hide me forever. I mean, come on. I'm irrepressible. I mean, look at me. Uh, you just can't keep this cuteness hidden from the world. I'm telling you. People need them some baby Moses. So mom or, or Jochebed, you can call her Jochebed. I, I just call her mom. I mean, she comes up with this plan to save me. And by plan, I mean, it's really more like a scheme, you know, kind of tricky and really not that well thought out. And it's to stick me in a basket and float me down the river. Why, you ask? I know I did. It's to keep me from being found by the mean Egyptian guys. Hey, over there, is that a crocodile? Am I the only person around here concerned that a helpless baby is floating down the river in a basket surrounded by crocodiles? Hello, grown-ups, anyone? Little help? Plus, I think this basket is leaking. Or I need a diaper change. Either way. Hey, did you hear that? It sounds like ladies talking. Yeah, look over there. Ladies. Fancy ladies come to get a little cleaned up in the river. Time to turn on the old baby Moses charm. It's irresistible, you know. Hey, ladies, over here. Well, we were very uh, pleased to find that video, and it was, it's about 10 years old, and I would like to attribute that to a specific branch church, but I found out that there's multitudes of them in, uh, in Texas, so I'm not sure exactly the, the one it is, but very talented, and uh, we certainly appreciate that. So that story, kids, is one about how Moses, this little baby, uh, is the people disobeyed the law and by disobeying the law Moses was allowed to grow and he grew strong and he is the one who came and led the Hebrew people after God told him led them out of slavery so from um, many many small things when when we, when we see something that's not right I'm not encouraging you to go out and break laws but I think it's okay to question things and to say, why? Ask why if things don't make sense. And go to your parents and ask them why. Or come to church and ask me why. So God bless you, and thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the video.
Friends, as we prepare to hear God's word for us today, would you please pray with me? God of revelation, mere flesh and blood cannot reveal divine truth. Only your spirit can give that gift. As we gather here and hear your word, we ask you to be in our breath and our voices. Be in our ears and understanding that through these words, that your word may be known. Amen. Friends, our first scripture reading is from the New Testament. It is from Paul's letter to the Romans. It's chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Let's listen now for the word of the Lord. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measures of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. And now, folks, this is uh, the very special music. This is Lord Grant Us Peace, arranged by Margot Davis, and it is accompanied by Tom Brandt, Andrea Carlson, Sue Ingersoll, Larry John, Scott Johnson, and Dick Ober. Lord, grant us peace, O oh Lord, grant us peace, O oh Lord, Lord, make me Lord, an instrument of thy peace. Grant us peace, O oh Lord, grant us peace, O oh Lord, oh grant us peace, O oh Lord, grant us peace, O oh Lord. Where there is hatred, let us love, let me so love, let us love. Where there is injury, Pardon. Let us pardon, O Lord. Where there is doubt, grant us faith, grant us faith, grant Where us hope. Where there is from despair, despair, grant us hope, O grant us. Where there Lord, is darkness, Lord, light, grant us light, grant us. And where there Lord, is sadness, us joy. Lord, Lord, make me Lord, an instrument. Grant us peace, O Lord, grant us peace, oh, thy peace. Grant us peace, O Lord, grant us peace, O divine, divine Master. Grant that, grant that I may, may not so much seek to be, to be, be consoled. consoled. As to console, to be understood, Lord. As to understand, Lord. To be loved, Lord. As to love, to be loved, to be loved, as to love, Lord. Lord, make me an instrument of Thy peace. Grant us peace, O Lord, grant us peace, oh, thy peace. Grant us peace, O Lord, grant us peace, O Lord. For it is in giving, in giving, Lord, that, that we receive, receive, O Lord. It is in pardoning, pardoning, Lord, that 
that we are pardoned, and it is in it is in dying in a dying, O oh Lord, that, that we are born. We are born to eternal life. We are born to eternal life. Lord, Lord make me Lord, an instrument of thy peace. Grant us peace, O oh Lord, grant us peace, of thy peace. Grant us peace, O oh Lord, grant us of thy peace. Grant us peace, O oh Lord, grant us of thy peace. My, wasn't that wonderful? St. Francis of Assisi lived uh, from like 1188 to 1228, around that time frame, and um, really was a person who came to know God, actually had a, a, an encounter with the risen Lord, uh, and came from a very, very rich and well-off family, and, and gave that all up to form um, a, an order of monks who lived in poverty, and uh, gave of a lot of himself. One of the things that we, not only has he given us this prayer, but he also was one of the biggest peacemakers at the time. Um, he made an effort to go down to Egypt and um, as, a, as an emissary of the church to try to settle the, one of the, the crusades when they were going through. Now I have to say that that wasn't a successful attempt, but certainly if you look back in those medieval times, uh, for him to reach out and to do that um, and, and live uh, was, just, was just an amazing thing. All right, well, let's continue on with our hearing and study of God's word. And our scripture reading will be from the Old Testament, from the book of Exodus. It's from the first chapter, and we're going to read uh, verse 8 all the way through chapter 2, verse 10. So listen now for the word of the Lord. Now a new king arose over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pithom and Ramesses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and bricks and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shiprah and the other Puah, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. 
When she could not hide him any longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews children, she said. Then her sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Such a wonderful story that we've all probably heard many times in Sunday school. And as adults, sometimes we forget about it and it's so great to come back and, and to reconnect with these stories. Now, as a child, just as when we played that video, as a child, the thing that you remember most is this image of this baby floating in a, in a basket. But really, the story is a lot more than that. Now, it is all about God and how God uh, uses bad situations to end up bringing glory to that which is his. And that certainly does happen. We all know what Moses grows up to be. But I think when we read in conjunction both the Romans chapter 12 that we read before, and then we overlay that with what we're hearing here, a very, very important aspect of our relationship with God comes out. And that is, how do we morally and ethically lead our lives? Because it's not easy. We all in our jobs or in our friendships or um, in, in our, our familial relations are sometimes called and asked to do things that really, if we gave it thought, we might decide not to do. And even worse, there's sometimes when governments will make laws that, well, they're just wrong. Or maybe they were right at one time, but they're no longer. Right. And we all know that governments can move very, very slowly on changing things. So the story that we're hearing here in, in Exodus is how the midwives were given a command, an earthly command from a king, and they knew it was wrong, and they chose to disobey it. Not only by not doing that, but by lying. This leads us into a quandary, a moral quandary, saying, Ours, is some lying okay? To what extent can we go to disobeying a law and still know that we're in the right? That's really the difficult thing. Now, the interesting thing is, is that throughout the Bible, in the Old Testament, there are stories of people that um, stood up and disobeyed or provided shelter for Hebrew people at, at, and put themselves at risk. And they called this, uh, the, 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 Israeli, the Israeli people still give an award out. If they call it the righteous among the nations. And the Hebrew word is for people of other nations is Gentiles. So we call these righteous Gentiles and the Shipra and Pua. They were named righteous. There's no evidence that they were Hebrew. They were midwives. And they serviced both Hebrew women and Egyptian women. When um, the king kind of catches on to what's going on, he says, well, why are you doing this? And their excuse is, well, you know, the Hebrew women are very vigorous in their childbirth and they, they have their kids before we get there. 
So it's not our fault. It's not our fault. The, the king says, well, okay, if, we can't, if I can't handle it that way, I'm going to do it another way. We're going to say, throw all the, the infant baby boys into the river. Now, I want to go back just a second. The king is not truly interested, right, in losing the services of the Hebrew people. He says that they are going to deal shrewdly with them. And the Hebrew word is, just, is, is actually a word for wisdom, although it has negative connotations to it. What he wants is he wants the benefit of the slave labor of the Hebrews and the fact that they do procreate, apparently, fairly quickly and, and, and very well. But he says we have to deal with these because, you know, if somebody attacks us and they're our slaves, then the men will join, get, rise up and join our enemies, and that'll be the end of us. So what we have to do is we have to control the number of males that are there. If he was truly fearful of just the Hebrew people, one of the ways would have been just to say, leave. Here's your freedom and leave. But he wasn't willing to do that because they were gaining something out of it. An ill-gotten gain, but they were gaining something out of it. So a very special baby is born, Moses. And this is where God, this is, this is, this is where the second act of disobedience comes. The person that finds the baby that is put into this basket among the reeds is Pharaoh's daughter. She hears the cry of the baby. And she takes compassion on it. And Moses, his sister, who was watching this whole thing, steps in at that point and says, hey, do you want somebody that can nurse that child for you? She says, yes. So the baby is returned to Moses' mother, who nurses it, who ends up getting paid to do that. And then when the child is weaned, is brought back, and becomes the son of Pharaoh's daughter, Pharaoh's grandson. The name Moses is actually, we look at it, there's, there's, when we look at the Egyptian, it means out of the water, right? And, but when we also look at the Hebrew, it means a son pulled out. That's just an interesting aside. But what we have here is that God's will is accomplished and it is accomplished because he raises up a leader in Moses that will eventually lead all of the Hebrew people out of the slavery that they are in Egypt. And it's done through the civil disobedience of three people, the two midwives and Pharaoh's daughter. It, I wouldn't be doing my job as a minister to stay here and say that we must then go forth and break every single law, and that's what God wants. And if that's what you're hearing from me today, then stop. I didn't say that. But God does want us to think. God gives us wisdom. And this is where Romans comes in. What Paul is saying in, in Romans is that we are transformed by the Holy Spirit when we open our heart to it, when we study scriptures together, and the Holy Spirit gives each of us gifts, and those gifts are different, and it is only together when we reason and pray and talk that all of those gifts come together into a basket that we can understand God's will better. Now, the three characters in the Moses' baby Moses story they didn't have that benefit, but we do. And this is where the church needs to continue to stand up through prayer, but also to stand up to injustice in the world. And injustice 
can take many shapes and many forms. And we have to understand something, or I have, I shouldn't say that, I had to understand something. And that is, is that injustice to people that are in power is something that's kind of invisible. If you're the beneficiary of it, you don't see it very much. That's where listening comes in. That's where broadening our base of people, people of different backgrounds and different ethnicities and different socioeconomic classes. Heartfelt listening. I am lucky enough to be involved with the Presbytery of Detroit in what we've been saying is an anti-racism workshop. And the most beneficial part of this is the fact that, well, first of all, the pandemic kind of put a stop to it because we were getting together face to face and then we couldn't do that. Now we do it through Zoom. But even through that technology, the benefit that I have is that I get to sit down with people whose experiences are much different than mine from where I grew up and what I was taught and what I experienced. And through the gift of the Holy Spirit, I can have compassion for their experiences. I'm still working on it. I think we all are, but we have to. Now, Henry David Thoreau, we all know Thoreau, he, you know, he had Walden Pond, he kind of gave everything up and lived around this pond in Massachusetts and wrote about it, and it's a wonderful book. But in the late 1840s, he actually wrote a treatise, a, di a discourse on civil disobedience. It was a time that he saw he was, a, he, he was an abolitionist. He saw slavery as a sin he also was very, very concerned about the war, the Mexican-American War that was going on and felt that that was an invasion of another sovereign nation. And he wrote and tried to justify civil disobedience. In his case, he said the civil disobedience that he recommended and that he practiced was to not pay taxes which also is one of the interesting reasons why he lived in poverty, because he figured he'd have less to lose if he didn't have anything and he didn't pay taxes. I encourage you, you can Google it. Just go Thoreau, civil disobedience, and you can find the entire treatise that's, that's online. But his point was, is that not that governments are bad, but that governments are slow to react. And it needs that initiation in order for change to occur. So that civil disobedience need not be considered to be a traitorous act if done correctly. I mean, we certainly have a lot of examples of people who believed in peaceful demonstration of civil disobedience. Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. come to mind. Martin Luther King told us that the moral arc of the universe bends towards justice. I love that saying of his, because an arc is a line that if you look at it over a long enough period of time, stretch it out, it actually looks straight, but it doesn't. It actually curves. And it says that the moral arc, what's right in the universe, bends ever so slightly and it takes a long time, but it's always moving towards justice. We live in a time of pandemic, and a lot of times we can just let all of this pandemic just take over our lives. We could watch 24-7, we can watch m news and, and see the number of cases and where we stand in relation to other countries and have arguments about are we doing the right thing, are we doing enough? But you know, in the midst of this, this country has also been involved with a tremendous effort to understand 
how people of different backgrounds have experienced our country in different ways. And when people disagree, it leads to arguing, and arguing oftentimes leads to a loss, a, a loss of a, a sense of, um, of a decency, right? Things are said in anger and overreactions are occurring, and that certainly happened here. But this is important, folks. In the midst of the largest pandemic that we've had in 100 years, the voices of enough people are rising up saying, we need to be better than what we are. And we need to have that discussion as a nation. And maybe if we do a good enough job as a nation, that then we can be a model for other countries in the world. So just like Moses was the only baby that was put into a basket and found and did that, and there were, just think about the hundreds or thousands of children that didn't survive. Let's not lose the opportunities that God puts in front of us to do this. And clearly, God has given us that opportunity. But let's be wise about it. Let's be calm about it. But let's be insistent about it. And let's be honest about it. God bless you all. Amen. Our hymn will be O Word of God Incarnate. Amen. And our thanks go to Andrea Carlson and Sue Ingersoll and uh, Scott Johnson for being our cantors today. And again, we, uh, Christine El Hajj for accompanying us. Friends, the opportunity that we have to be God's people, just as Paul said in Romans, is best expressed when we're together. 
And so we do have our individual prayer lives, and that's important that we do that because that gives us uh, some one-on-one -on -one time with ourselves and with God and, and to ask for the intercession of the Holy Spirit into, the, into our lives, to give thanks to the wonderful things that were happening, and then also to lift up the, the difficult things in our lives, the things that we struggle with. But our prayers are also done together, and we call that corporate prayer. And we always take this opportunity during worship to have that. So would you please join me in prayer? Heavenly God, who can probe the depths of your wisdom? Who can attain the height of your vision? Your goodness surrounds us like the waters of the ocean. We give you thanks for your mercy. It envelopes us as the sun warms our days. And when we feel a gentle breeze, we take that as a hint of tenderness. And during storms, we hear claps of thunder and they remind us of your fierce judgment. You bring order out of chaos to create. You command discipline in us in the midst of faithfulness and you offer forgiveness with the promise of new life. You stoop to us. Just as a mother bends to lift her child, you sent your only son to us. And he heard us. You lended an ear to our needs and you heard our supplications. And he rose to your right hand and from there he sits and you rejoice with him at the sounds of our thanksgiving and you're warmed by the songs of our praise. You don't leave us alone during times of temptation, but instead through your spirit, you're there to assure us that you will be with us whenever we are put to the test. Your spirit comforts us in our distress and it also goes us to action when our commitment varies. And it is in your son Jesus that you bestow on us the worth that we possess. We all, all of our successes to his love. He endured persecution for our sake. He suffered for our separation from you. He came into the world to enlighten our way. And in his resurrection, this demonstrated your power. You are the giver of compassion and mercy. We ask you to make us mindful once again of the water that cleanses. In our baptism, we were cleansed and we were accepted as child of God just as that water sprang from a rock that soothed the parched throats of the Israelites who were wandering in the desert. Lord, we're parched, we're dry. Let your water enliven our faith as we recall our baptisms. And Lord, we lift up all folks who are having a difficult time right now. We have people who are fearful people who have been economically disadvantaged because of this pandemic. We would pray that uh, we would have compassion as a government to help them, but also that they would be led to new ways of living. That sometimes giving up something is necessary before we can actually embrace the things that you actually have intended for us. And that takes courage, and we need that from you. And we pray for the healing of everyone who is sick, and for those who are approaching the end of their mortal life here. Lord, we pray for strength, strength and comfort to their families that they can give to them. And Lord, we pray that with the knowledge and the, and the sure hope of the resurrection of the dead to the kingdom of heaven. Lord, we make our confession of Christ as our Redeemer and as our Savior. We ask you to sustain us as we thirst for that salvation. Lead us to offer to others the cup of hope that springs from refreshment and rest. 
fill our lips with the story of Christ's deliverance from evil, how he thwarted oppression with embracing love and concern for others, how he went out and found the people who were on the limits of society. Let others through us taste your goodness. Let them draw from the well of your wisdom and let them come to confess Christ as the source of their lives. And Heavenly God, we pray this in the way that your son Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, friends. This draws our service of worship to a close. We thank you so much for being with us. We hope that you might be strengthened in your own way and connected with God through what we've done here today. You'll see that there's a multitude of ways that if you'd like to support the ministry of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church that you can give safely and securely online or our address if you would like to send a check. Again, as we always say, if you're a member or affiliated with the church, we do ask in this time of separation, exile, that you still remember your stewardship to this church, that we will continue to do all that we can and, new, and do new things so that we can continue to stay in contact with each other and to be in fellowship with one another. If you're visiting with us because your own church isn't missing, please, you're under no obligation to provide any financial assistance to us. But we would ask you to remember your own church because they are going through the same difficult time that all churches are also. And lest we all think it's about money, let us understand that what Christ calls us to do is to tithe, but to tithe is not only our treasure that God gives us, but it's also our time and our talent. So make sure that you're doing that. Go out and help. There's so many opportunities. And uh, if we practice safe social distancing, we can connect in and help a lot of people who are in need right now. I would encourage you to do that. As always, following this, we have a virtual coffee hour in our parlor that is done through a Zoom call, and that information should be there. If you would like to connect with us even further, I would encourage you to do one of two things. Number one, go to our website, www.allenparkpress.org. From there, you'll find quite a bit of information about us, but also uh, a way that you can sign up for our constant contact emails, in which case you would receive notifications through your email of everything that we do. And also stay connected with our Facebook page. We do do many of our things. We, we produce live on there, not only this worship service, but we also have uh, daily devotionals that are at 9 a.m. Monday through Thursday, or most Mondays through Thursdays, whenever that, that we can. And also a weekly Bible study that we run on Wednesday nights. Um, also the contact information for the church is if there's a way we can help you, if there's a way we can pray with you and for you, please let us know. I wish you many blessings. And as we go forth into this world, go forth firmly with the knowledge of the love of God, the peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Be blessed, my friends.